All right, Tanya. So we just got finished learning about earthworms. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about organic gardening. The two got, go together a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Okay. So I have a couple of questions for you okay. about organic gardening. What do we mean by organic gardening? Because we hear the term all the time, but what does it mean? It's a moving target. It means okay. different things to different people. So it means one thing to a farmer who's trying to grow commercially to sell their vegetables in a grocery store and have a, an organic label on there. But today, we're not going to get that technical. Okay. We're just going to deal with um, what the average vegetable gardener in their backyard would consider growing organically. So that just means using all natural products and trying to reduce the amount of right. uh, pesticides that they use in general. Okay. All right, so what is the most important thing to know about gardening naturally or organically? I would say that prevention is key. The most important thing, in my opinion, is if you're going to try to limit your use of chemicals, is that you set yourself up for success from the beginning. Um, good cultural practices, because you don't want to wait until you have a large problem to deal with, and then you're limited on what you can use mm -hmm. to combat the problem. Okay. So let's go back. Naturally versus organic, though. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by naturally? Is well, uh, non-man-made okay. chemicals okay. for the most part. Okay, so, so it's natural. Okay, yes. I got you. All right, so what are some things you can do to prevent disease in your garden? Because, of course, you think about it, we've had a lot of rain yes. recently over the past month. We're getting a lot of calls at the office about diseases, so how do we mm -hmm. prevent those? Right, you want to try to prevent your disease before you have it, because once you have it, there's not a whole lot you can do about a fungal <laughs> right. disease. So the first thing um, you could do is grow varieties that have disease resistance mm -hmm. in their uh, genetic makeup. So uh, start out with a... Uh, a tomato plant that's already resistant to some of your fungal right. diseases. Um, of course, that usually eliminates most of your heirlooms, but if you're not interested in growing the heirloom or you're just starting out trying to grow organically, I would suggest start with a, um, a plant that has some disease resistance built in. Okay. And then when you, when you plant your garden, you want to make sure that you space things far enough apart so that you get good air circulation. Um, and good sunlight penetration. Mm -hmm. That's going to help dry out the moisture because moisture is going to breed your fungal problems, right. your fungal spores, like you were talking about good with point. the wet weather. Right. Um, another thing you want to do is, a lot of people don't think about mulching their vegetable mm -hmm. garden, but mulching your vegetable garden can go a long way in disease prevention because it provides a layer um, between your soil surface and your plant leaves so that when you water, you're not splashing fungal right. spores onto the leaves of your plants. Um, another thing you can do is practice crop rotation. That's very important. And what we mean by crop rotation is that you don't plant the same plant in the same spot year after year after year. Right. So you don't put your tomatoes in your same spot year after year. You want to put them on a three or four year rotation with other plants. And so um, one way to remember it is legume, root, leaf, and fruit. Okay. So you have different plant families that you are moving around, you can do it in a circular pattern or however way that you have um, designed it uh, in your garden plan, mm -hmm. but you don't want to put the same things in the same spots because you'll get a buildup of fungal, you could get a buildup of fungal material that particularly enjoy, for instance, peppers or eggplant. So you want to vary what you're planting in that same spot. So you mentioned crop rotation for disease purpose, but how about for insect pressure? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that too. Uh, for insect pre prevention, the right. first thing you want to do is scout. You want to scout your plants. So you want to get familiar with your garden and be out there every day looking around. Um, know what a squash bug mm -hmm. egg looks like. Um, know what an aphid looks like. If you're out there actively looking for problems, you can catch um, insect insect uh, populations before they get out of control yeah. and then you feel like you have to use something heavy to kill them but you know if you have a, a light infestation picking off the eggs of the stuff or you know spraying it down to get the aphids off or even using a sponge and soapy water uh, to get rid yeah. of things in their early beginning stages right. um, so scouting your plants also don't kill your beneficial insects. Your beneficial insects like the ladybug, the ladybug um, kills, eats aphids. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you don't kill your ladybugs and you need to know what the larval stage of the ladybug True. looks like because it undergoes a, a metamorphosis. And so most people don't know what uh, 
the larva ladybug looks like and they'll kill it inadvertently. And um, tomato hornworms, if you see one with uh, little white egg sacs all over its back, you want to leave that one alone because it's breeding more beneficial wasps to go out and kill your other tomato hornworms. So, um, and then there are other things that are harder contr to control, like the squash vine borer. Yeah, that's, exactly that's a very difficult very one tough. to control. But um, one thing you can do, maybe not with 100% success, but you can try to cover up the the stems of the squash vines so that it's called a barrier method or exclusion method. Okay. You can either okay. cover the stems with mulch or keep on wrapping them with aluminum foil. I've yeah. done that myself, right. but that's kind of a bummer. But if you keep <laughs> the, yeah, because you have to constantly go right. back and it's not foolproof, but um, cover the stems with mulch to provide a barrier between the squash vine borer uh, and the squash plant. So those are some things you can do for insect prevention. Okay. Uh, so what are some organic things you can use if you have a problem to address? Okay, well I brought some things to show you today. Okay. The first one is an insecticidal soap. Yeah. Um, and this is a very kind of a lightweight stuff for your soft bodied insects like spider mites and aphids and those type of things. Um, probably not going to work on your squash bugs, mm. but for um, light infestations you can use an insecticidal soap, it's okay. very safe. Um, I brought some BT to show you. These are called BT dunks and this is actually if you have a, a rain barrel that you're using to irrigate oh, your yeah. garden with, you can put uh, BT is a soil borne um, organism that you just crumble some of this up in the top of your rain barrel mm -hmm. and it will, it controls mosquitoes. Right. So um, that's a way to keep a rain barrel to water your plants without the mosquitoes. Um, and you can also use a different type of BT to kill any kind of caterpillar that you have, like your hornworms and right. such. That's right. Um, I did bring, this is horticultural oil. And we use oil a lot of times on our fruit trees and things when they're dormant um, to kill scale. Mm -hmm. And so what an oil does is it coats the back of the scale or the other insects with the oil and so they can't breathe because a lot of insects, they breathe through spiracles in their back. Mm -hmm. And if you coat them over, they can't breathe and they die. So right. we have this um, horticultural and dormant spray oil that we can use on our trees and shrubs, okay. especially if you're growing fruit trees. Um, let's see, I brought some neem oil, it comes from the neem tree. And neem oil has a variety of uses. It can be used as insecticide, as a, a growth regulator. Mm -hmm. It messes up their ability to reproduce, okay. um, and it can make them grow kind of in strange ways so that <laughs> you can maybe not kill them, but um, keep the population from getting larger. Okay. Some things, just because it is an oil, it will kill, just like the scale we just talked about, suff suffocating right. them um, through their back. And neem oil has also, also been used successfully to prevent um, powdery mildew. Okay. okay. Let's see, I brought this, um, this is a combination thing, controls insects and fungal diseases, and it, it contains sulfur, and that's the part for um, fungal, and it contains a pyrethrin, and that's your insecticide part. Now this is a little bit heavier um, insecticide and maybe would take care of your squash bugs, whereas insecticidal soap probably won't. Right. So um, if you've got some other things a little harder to control, you can go to the pyrethrins, and pyrethrin comes from a chrysanthemum, mm -hmm. it's extract. And it's then lovely. I brought this diatomaceous earth that can be used for a lot of different things. Yeah. But in my landscape, um, I have problems with slugs on my lettuce, trying to get my lettuce, and also my bedding plants in my front yard. So I use this for um, slug control. All right, Tanya, we appreciate that. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you much.